Um, I once gave a speech which was not controversial and the main response I got was people were so disappointed because they expect me to be controversial. So I plan not to disappoint you today. And uh, I will say things that are maybe contradictory or controversial and might even offend some of you. And if you can't handle that, then this is the time to leave. Uh, but if you're robust, then uh, let's proceed. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, smoking and anti-smoking legislation around the world and it's the, the, the IP aspects of it and property rights aspects generally. Uh, and just to give you some idea of how controversial this can get, uh, what has happened is that private property, like where we are now, it's entirely 100% private, is called public property. In other words, for the purposes of tobacco and smoking regulation, all private property, all workplaces, restaurants, shops, hotels, uh, the barn on a farm that a farmer by him or herself walks into with no one else within kilometers is now called public property. It's a workplace. And that farmer, under the proposed legislation here and in many other countries, will not be able to farm to, to smoke in his or her own barn. And I'm going to also try to talk about why it matters. I should imagine many or most in this room, like me, are non-smokers. I'm a lifelong non-smoker, and let me get this out of the way. I dislike smoking. I think it's a bad idea for some people, not everybody. And I want to immediately point out that smoking is a good idea for some people and benefits some people. So that, that we need to realize we're not all the same. One size does not fit all. And if smoking is good for you, it doesn't have to be good for you or vice versa. And the same is true of everything else. Uh, what you are doing now, all of you, except for one at the back, is doing what the World Health Organization calls the new smoking, the new tobacco, which is sitting. Sitting is now considered to be as bad for you as smoking <laughs> and might even be worse. And uh, so when I want to talk about tobacco, and to, by the way, there is no such thing as tobacco control or tobacco regulation. You have never seen a government health inspector chasing an unruly cigarette down the street. <laughs> All control is people control. There is only one thing you control, which is human beings. And I want to talk about the implications of controlling the property rights aspects of tobacco and everything else that follows. So uh, this is, uh, and you might, people have always said to me, I've had a uh, prominent economist, Davi Ruert, called me once and said, why do I waste my time combating anti-smoking, anti-smoker? You must understand, these are laws against people who smoke. So it's, it's wrong to call them anti-tobacco or anti-smoking, it's anti-smoker laws. These are attacks on people who choose to smoke. And I want you, all of you who might be against smoking in the audience, to at least for a moment suspend your own personal emotions and prejudices and to get rid of the notion that used to justify it, which was to protect non-smokers, so-called passive smokers. Let's be clear that that is no longer even pretended to be the justification. That is gone. So if you were ever in favor of anti-smoking, anti-smoker legislation in order to protect non-smokers, that's no longer relevant. You are now not dealing with that anymore. And all you needed to protect non-smokers was the same law that permits you to sit there right now. And I want some of you just to do this. Just swing your arm in the, your f hand in the air. That's good. Just do this here. Okay, you're all free to swing your fist in the air, but you're not allowed to do it where my nose is. Okay? Now, that is true of smoking. <laughs> you are free to blow smoke into the air, but not where my nose is. So as long as my nose is 100 protected, percent protected from your fist and your smoke. That's all I need as a non-smoker or as a non-punch bag. Either way, that's all the law needs to do is to say I am protected from you harming me. But for the rest, you can do it yourself. Now, before I get into the IP aspects of this, just let me point out some of the ludicrous nature of what is proposed in South Africa and in many other countries under the support of the World Health Organization. 
And that is that, for example, uh, it is proposed in South Africa that in my home, there may be no smoking in my private house if I happen to have a domestic worker, which I do, comes in one day a week, and she smokes. <laughs> so I don't, you see. But by law now, she is forbidden from smoking in my house because she smokes. This is how ludicrous it is. The people who have written this law, I don't know who they are. They are legally and jurisprudentially illiterate. They do not understand the implications of what they write. For example, the proposal in South Africa and other countries is you may not smoke in the vicinity of a window or an exit or an entrance. Now, you may not smoke close to one. Now, if you live in a low-income area, a South African low-income area, mainly in South Africa for historical reasons, a black area, like, say, Alexandra Township, there will, under the law as proposed, be nowhere in Alexandra where you could lawfully smoke. Anyone living in Alexandra who wants to smoke will have to leave Alexandra completely in a taxi, and then they can't smoke in a public place. They can't just go and stand on a sidewalk somewhere and smoke. They will have to find a rich person with a garden <laughs> who permits them to go into their garden and smoke. This is how mad it is. Now, this is what is seriously proposed, approved by the cabinet, about to become law in South Africa, and it is insane. It's not even remotely sensible, not by any stretch of the imagination. Now, let's get on to the property rights aspects. Firstly, the physical property. As I've said, basically all private property is now called public property, including where we are now. So say, for example, we were a convention of smokers. And say, for example, we put up a sign on the door, smoking obligatory. It's required. You may not come in unless you do it. Why should we not be free to do that? It's our rights. It's our right of association, our property. And I'm trying to get somebody, if any of you here own a restaurant or whatever, I want somebody to establish a restaurant where smoking is compulsory. <laughs> smoking required restaurant. And only people who smoke will be permitted in, including health department inspectors, will not be allowed in unless they are smoking. <laughs> and this should be, in my view, a perfectly legitimate thing to do with your private property. This is the point. It is a property rights violation. Now, uh, when, they, when you say you're going to regulate smoking no longer for protecting third people, that's gone long ago. That is no longer a relevant proposition to make. It is now about you and controlling you and your lifestyle. So if you personally want to smoke or drink, alcohol is also now under attack, for example, the imminent prohibition of advertising alcohol, and where you may drink alcohol, where you may serve alcohol. And then it goes further. Uh, as I say, sitting, what you are doing now, genuinely, don't have to believe me, look it up, Go to the World Health Organization and look up the dangers of sitting. And you will see that what you're doing now is an extremely hazardous activity, very bad for your personal health. And your bum is your private property, I would suspect. You should be free to sit on it. And your chair. Now, uh, what we can see is we will have restrictions on chairs. You know, for example, uh, T taxes on comfortable chairs, like syntax, a sit, a sit tax, a syntax, <laughs> and uh, restriction. And literally, it has been proposed in some countries special taxes on, for example, reality TV, because it induces people to sit too long and too much. Uh, cinemas, for example, can be legitimately, and it is being proposed, be required to have intervals so that people have to stand up every 20 minutes or half hour, or certainly every hour. Now, that's the one thing about property, physical property, that you may not in your own home or your own business or your own place or your own club, uh, even if you are by yourself. So, for example, if you're a, an, uh, you're a carpenter and you work by yourself in your carpentry place, your shed, your garage, whatever, you, because it's a workplace, you will not be allowed to smoke there if you are the only person there. That is how silly the proposals are and have become. Then um, 
Much else. Uh, it, is, it is much more dangerous, it's a much bigger cause of disease and death uh, to have unprotected sex. So if you can justify restricting your ability to smoke because it's bad for you, well then you should also be able to prohibit unprotected sex or premarital sex or extramarital sex. Uh, and uh, obesity is more dangerous, so you should ban obesity. It should just not be allowed and if anyone has overweight, uh, you should have a special tax imposed on you because you require the rest of us society to look after you when you get weight-related diseases, so-called. And never mind the fact that, in fact, tobacco users and liquor users pay more in tax than is spent on them. And they save us twice over, for those of us who don't smoke, just encourage everyone around you to smoke because they die sooner and they claim less social welfare. So, uh, if the claims are true, so they save us money. Smokers subsidize non-smokers. Uh, this is uh, uh, fiscally what happens. So let's get to the uh, intellectual property rights aspects, branding and trade names and so on, which started being under attack when advertising was banned. Now, very few people ever query this anymore. And I want to suggest that the prohibition on advertising and the prohibition on branding, which is now uh, happening all around the world uh, and South Africa imminently, the prohibition is not so much a violation of the rights of the supplier. Now this unfortunately I believe in the intellectual property rights and the property rights discourse, it's always portrayed as if this is somehow the right of the brand holder the market, the company's brand or label or whatever. What about the consumers? Consumers like to wear designer labels or to, you know, look, uh, somebody told me I had a nice tie today. Well, should we prohibit nice ties? Because uh, it somehow labels us, it positions us. The fact that you wear a tie at all positions you, says something about you. Now, if you don't allow the intellectual property rights of branding, the rights that really matter are consumers. Consumers are denied the right to information about products they buy. Where can they get it? At what prices? Where are their specials? They are denied the right of innovation and new entry into the market. So that in South Africa that has very severe racial implications. Black people basically are forbidden by law from entering into markets in which Advertising is restricted, future, imminently liquor and, and at the moment tobacco. And so small business, emerging business, but the consumers have a right to it. And I always like to say, could, it's not your right to sell which matters. It's my right to buy which matters. It's the consumer's right that really is under attack and being violated. Consumers are being forced to have so-called... Um, graphic warnings on their products, which means pictures of diseased lungs on products you buy. Now, why is this acceptable to consumers? Why are consumers abused this way, being forced to carry around ugly pictures, to look at them when they use a perfectly lawful and legitimate product? And people around them have to see these ugly pictures. And if you do it with tobacco, then you have to understand everything else must follow. If you in this room condone this for tobacco or smoking, you have no principled argument about what comes next, which is graphic health warnings on the wine bottle at your table, pictures of diseased livers and blood and gore uh, on your wine bottle, your beer bottle, your whiskey bottle, whatever it is, and uh, no branding. In other words, they all have to look the same. This is what's being done with tobacco. Well, wine, then liquor must follow. Don't be surprised when it does. And don't think that you're then having your right to an attractive bottle of wine on your table being violated. You've condoned it if you condone it for tobacco. And you've condoned it for everything else that is considered unhealthy. Sugar products, all chocolate bars, will have to be the same shape and size and in the same looking packet and no branding. Now, the victims of this are not only the suppliers of chocolate bars, on the contrary, they are beneficiaries. Let's understand this. If you ban advertising and you ban branding, you protect the people who are already in the market against competitors and newcomers. 
You force consumers to stick with what they already consume and deny them the right to being told about something that they can consume instead, some alternative. And so the right to innovation, for example, is a violation of the consumer's rights. If you can't market and advertise, you can't market, it's about to be banned, uh, harm reduction products, e-cigarettes and filtered cigarettes and harmless cigarettes, you know, I don't know, cigarettes made out of oak trees or something. Um, but more importantly also is that the lifestyle is, is violated. You, you are being, and I just am amazed that consumers, smokers, I'm amazed how smokers allow themselves to be humiliated. The human dignity, section one of our constitution, you have the right to dignity. The human dignity of smokers is just assaulted in a most obnoxious way. They're, they're made to feel guilty about what they do, they have to hide away, they have to stand in corners, they have to stand outside. And I think this is just a complete outrage of the way to teach, to treat ordinary civilians and Smoking happens to be less common in this room because you're elites. It's more common in a room of, say, working class people. So it's also a rich, poor issue. And in South Africa, that means white, black. And then uh, the right to bodily integrity, the right to control your own health, your own body, what you do with your body. And what you do with your body is also a property right. You know, I presume you own your body, at least you, you should think so. And uh, I would like to privatize everybody's mouth. I think all mouths ought to be privatized and everyone should own their own mouth, meaning everyone should decide for themselves what goes in and out of it. What comes out of it is called free speech and what goes into it is called bodily integrity and lifestyle choice. And then um, <coughs> the... Sorry. The other aspect of this is, again, not that suppliers have their rights violated, but consumers are denied to know not only what products are available, but already it is difficult to get. There's a proposed prohibition in South Africa on vending machines. Uh, there's a proposed prohibition on display. Now, uh, as of today, I saw an article that the Informal Traders Association of South Africa, OCHIB, the African Chamber of Hawkers and Informal Businesses, has come out against the proposed smoking laws because small businesses basically are being forbidden from selling tobacco products. In other words, if you're a big business, if you're a pick and pay, a Woolworths, a Macro, uh, or if you live in a rich suburb with gardens, or you work in an office park with gardens, then you should be in favor of these restrictions because they deny everyone else the freedoms that you enjoy and they deny everyone else the right to market the product. So informal businesses basically will not be able to comply because the law prescribes that it has to be hidden from view. There's no way of letting consumers know you sell the product. They have to actually ask for it and you have to then have the products uh, in a cabinet that's locked. Now, a street vendor or an informal spaza owner couldn't possibly do that. It's impractical. Now, those are the rights of the traders. NAFCOC, the National African Federated Chamber of Commerce, has objected to these anti-smoking, anti-tobacco laws. The informal traders have done so. But where are the big businesses? Where's Fedahasa, the hotel association? They don't do it because they can have a garden on the roof where you can go and smoke. So the this is a violation of the rights of the poor, but it's consumers. It's the poor consumer, the laborer who walks out of a factory site onto the sidewalk and wants to buy whatever products they want from a street vendor. That street vendor will now effectively not be able to, not be allowed to supply the product. In other words, this is a discrimination in favor of big formal rich business and in favor of rich consumers and a violation of the rights of small informal suppliers and lower income consumers. These are the people being attacked and whose rights are violated and it's their property right. The right to a branded product, the right to own and supply and exchange property, uh, the right to use their own property as they wish. And as I say, I am ready to support and invest in Anyone who wants to open a restaurant or a club, 
that makes smoking obligatory and let's take them on. This outrageous violation of the human rights, the dignity, the lifestyle choice, the branding, the property, the personal possessions, the bodily integrity of ordinary civilians should not be allowed anymore. And I'm hereby making no apology for calling for civil disobedience. It will happen. Nobody will obey the law. And they shouldn't obey the law. Everybody should actually just say, enough now. This law is now so outrageous that no respectable human being can be expected to take it seriously. And uh, so the, the uh, issue then is consumers. I want to get this right here. Consumers have the right to branding, attractive products, information about products, access to products, control over their own body and lifestyle integrity. This should be considered a consumer right. The secondary right is the right of suppliers and businesses to intellectual and physical property. Primary right, in my view, is consumers. Thank you.